What is up everyone? I am incredibly excited to announce that the Noto PGA DFS model is now downloadable and customizable. So my favorite part of creating lineups and uh, doing research every week is looking at the course and trying to figure out what I think is most important. And then I go through, I adjust all my weights and my model, come up with my own ratings. It's an incredibly fun process and historically, You've only been able to see the model uh, in the model video breakdown that I do each week. And then the end result um, is in lineup HQ under the Noto, heading, Noto rating uh, column. Now you can download the model. You can adjust the weights yourself to come up with your own set of ratings that you can uh, upload right up into lineup HQ. And then you can build lineups off of your own ratings. So I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to provide a ton of value for you, the premium members here at Roto Grinders. And I hope uh, all of you are as excited about this as I am. Um, I wanna make this as user-friendly as possible. So if you have any feedback at all, whether um, it's something that could be um, easier to do, um, whether you have ideas on how to improve it, something that you'd like to see added, or if you just wanna say you like it the way it is, uh, let me know, leave a comment on this page uh, at the bottom if you have any questions at all on how to use it, how to download it, um, just let me know, I am here to help. You can also send me a message on Twitter. So let's get into um, the tutorial, the walkthrough. So at the very top are going to be the weights um, of the overall categories. And then you're going to have more weights right here, which are the individual stat ratings. Uh, all of these columns um, are going to be explained right here in the legend. I thought that would be very helpful, um, especially the first couple weeks that we have this going. So uh, let's say you're over here and you don't really know what comp one means. Obviously, you're not going to know that. So that's going to be strokes gain per round in no cut events. It's going to be a WGC event this week. I think that's going to be pretty important. So I decided to include that as part of the model. Now, each week I'm going to have different stats in here. Each week I'll have different comp scores. Uh, some will be, you know, comp to other courses. Some will be comp to something like a no cut, some will be comp to just eat birdie fest, whatever it may be that I think is going to be important. I'll include that in the model uh, each and every week. Uh, so you'll see a slightly different setup each week, but for the most part, you're going to get the hang of it really quickly. Uh, so if you have any questions, just refer to the legend. And then if you uh, can't figure it out from there, just let me know and I will be glad to answer any questions that you have. Now the ownership projections, they are blank right now. Uh, this is the Monday version of the downloadable link. I think I'm gonna have an updated one on Wednesday uh, that will have ownership projections in it. And it might have my player notes as well. I think a lot of people um, have asked for those player notes where I go through and I just say, hey, Finau's made this many of this many cuts. Uh, he's got this course history. Um, he gained this many strokes on approach his last event, whatever it may be. I usually have a little note um, that would replace this uh, legend over here. So uh, moving forward, I will have the player notes included in Wednesday's edition that will also have the ownership percentage. Now let's go through how the model works. Um, I was going to lock the entire sheet, but uh, if I do that, then you can't, um, well, I was gonna lock it except for the percentages. So I didn't want people to be able to come in here and change a lot of stuff um, and, and mess with the overall uh, formulas, but um, if I do lock the sheet, then you aren't going to be able to sort by anything. And I think part of the value that comes with this model is being able to sort. If you want to look at guys that have done well ball striking over the last 12 weeks, you can easily do it. The top five guys right here. If you want to look at guys with the five best course history at TBC Southwind, you can do it. If you want to look at guys that play well the best in no-cut events, pretty easy. If you want to look at guys that finish in the top 10% of events the most often, it's very easy. So uh, I think it's very important to have the um, ability to sort. So uh, the only the only cells that are locked are going to be these 200 right here. And ultimately, you want your uh, total weightings to be 100. So as it's set up right now, this means that there's a 5% weight to the Vegas odds. So if you, if you think Vegas um, is predictive of fantasy performance, then you can bump this up, you can bump this down, you can leave it at 5%, whatever you want. If you want to lean heavy on stats, you can bump this up to 40%. Now you'll notice I changed that to 40 and it turned this red. So that means it's not going to equal 100%. So if I bump something else down, it'll go back to 100%. Um, now the model will still work if this doesn't equal 100. It doesn't have to, but um, just for ease of use, I would recommend getting it to 100. So if I put the 
the stats at 10%, and then I have only a total rating of 70%. Technically, the stats aren't weighted at 10% because it's only out of 70. Technically, it's only out of it's only going to be a 7% weighting. Um, so for me, um, or sorry, yeah, 7% weighting. So for me, um, I would try to get this to be 100%. So I'll change this back to 35. Change this back to uh, 10%. And again, you can do whatever you want with these. If you think course history is going to be important, bump this up, bump something else down. If you think the whole yardage breakdown is going to be important, bump that up, bump something else down. Now, the whole yardage breakdown takes par 3, par 4, and par 5 scoring, um, and it compares it to scoring from those ranges uh, at this week's course for each golfer. So let's say there's five par 5s between 400 and 450 yards. This is just an example. So I take that five out of 18 holes, and I apply Xander's scoring from those ranges from 450 to 400 yards and give that a weight of 5 of 18. Do that for every hole on the course so you can see who, who performs the best on holes of the length of each course that they're going to play. For this week, it's going to be Morikawa, Connor, Spieth, Xander, and Answer. Again, there's not one right answer um, to predicting golf. Golf's wild. Golf's random. Um, that's what makes it so fun. But uh, I like having as many different inputs as possible that I do think are predictive in nature so then we have uh long-term form this is how if you just scroll over here long-term form strokes gain on the field over the last 20 months midterm form strokes gain on the field over the last 15 months and then short-term form strokes gained on the field over the last four events uh, i also have this strength of field index which i think is very important a lot of uh, models uh, out there they don't have an ability to discount a golfer that is only played in weak fields so a guy that uh, you know come up on the corn Ferry tour or that just plays in like the barracuda and all that um, he's playing against much weaker competition so i don't think he should be rewarded for that um, and that kind of helps with this so guys that are playing in stronger fields somebody like adam scott he doesn't have a lot of great finishes this year a lot of middling finishes but he's only playing in the best fields so i think he should be rewarded for that he's played against the toughest competition so he gets the highest score there and then, uh, again, how often a golfer finishes in the top 25% of the field, how often a golfer finishes in the top 10% of the field. For me, this helps me catch some upside. Uh, for the longest time, my model was much better at predicting consistency than upside, and I do think these two columns help. So let's just go through. So let's say off the tee, uh, you think uh, off the tee is going to be important. I have a mix of short-term and long-term, 7% apiece. Uh, for TBC Southwind, it sounds like hitting fairways is going to be important. So I'm going to have a bigger weight for accuracy than I am for distance. Uh, approach, both short-term and long-term. I think approach is going to be important every week, but especially this week. So maybe I'll bump these up to 13%. Or if you want to look at a guy that's better recently, you put it at 15 and then put long-term at 10. Proximity numbers, these are from the key ranges of the course that week. So at TBC Southwind, the most three common uh, approach shot buckets are 125 to 150 150 to 175 and 175 to 200 so that's going to get a small weight for me as well uh, recent ball striking guys that have just found it recently with the uh, off the tee and on approach you got birdie or better i usually have that about the same as bogey avoidance uh, for the week but this is a no cut event so being able to score is going to be good for you know moving up the leaderboard and being good for uh scoring for fantasy scoring so i have a much higher weight for birdie or better than i usually would Green regulation, strokes gained around the green. These greens are pretty tough to hit, and it's a pretty tough place to scramble as well. So I think that deserves a pretty big weight. And then I'm not quite at 100%, so I'll take 1% off of strokes gained putting on Bermuda. Come up with my 100%. Um, I usually don't give a big weight to Vegas Odd because I like to trust myself more than Vegas. So um, I'll bump that down. I'll bump up course history a little bit. I'll bump up the whole yardage a little bit. Um, and then when it comes to form, I usually do the biggest weights on long-term, mid-term, bump down short-term. Um, and then let's do one more percent to the comp score. So um, those are going to be my weights, at least for this video. You go over here, you can manually sort uh, and get your rankings. Uh, which is pretty cool. Get your ratings, get your rankings. And uh, again, I'm going to add a column so that you can manually adjust golfers up and down. Um, naturally, a model isn't going to incorporate everything. So there's some golfers that just 
aren't going to necessarily project all that well. So one is Hideki Matsuyama. He's been playing much better recently, but he's had a lot of middling finishes over the last you know two years or so. So uh, that's kind of why um, he's not a very good putter, not very good, one of the worst in the field actually, especially on Bermuda. So that's kind of bra- dragging his uh, his rating down a little bit. And so uh, with that manual rating uh, column, you will be able to go in and just say bump Hideki up this many percent and it'll bump him up. Um, and then you can use that in lineup HQ. For right now, if you do want to change any golfers um, to where you're building lineups, just go ahead and um, change it in this column here. That'll change his rating. That'll change his fantasy point per dollar rating. Um, and you can do that. Um, I personally, yeah, I mean, you can just go ahead and do that. But I do think I would wait for the the column next week. Um, but for now, um, that's an easy fix for that. So once you have all of your um, weights set and you feel good about your ratings, um, for one, you can go ahead and build lineups this way. If you're only building a handful of lineups, you can just do it looking at this. You know, you say, oh, Hatton's only 7,400. That's a great price. He's rating out as the best value play in my model on DraftKings or on FanDuel. We got Max Homa, 7,500. That's way cheap for a guy that's had a ton of high finishes recently. So um, yeah, you can build lineups this way. Or if you're building a bunch of lineups, which I do every single week, you can upload them right into Lineup HQ. I'll quickly show you how to do that. So just click on the upload tab here at the bottom. Um, all of these ratings are, are coming from the first tab, so you don't have to change anything here. All you got to do, open up a new Excel sheet. I'll move it over here a little bit. Copy the first three columns. Now you're going to paste special and click values. And you got to paste special and click values because it, it's linked into a formula right here. So you just want the values. I always go ahead and change the format to a number format. That way there's only two decimal places and not a bunch once you line up in once you upload them into lineup HQ. Click file, save as, and you have to save as a CSV or it won't uh, upload into lineup HQ. So save as a CSV dot CSV. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, we'll call it WGC um, upload number one. So save it, get out of it. Now you're going to open Roto Grinders Lineup HQ. This is DraftKings. This is this week's slate. All you're going to do is click on this and go down to Upload, Download Projections. You're going to click Choose File. And then you're going to find that file that you just saved, WGC Upload Number 1. I always like to name it um, because you might want to go back, mess with the ratings. Maybe you hear somebody say, Oh, uh, strokes gained off the tee is going to be way more important than we originally thought. Or the course is softer, so you got to be more aggressive with their irons. Whatever it may be. Maybe you want to go back and just mess around with the ratings. So I'm going to call this WGC number one. That way you know that that was your first upload. Um, and then you're going to click upload. You'll see it pop up right here. And then you just click use this. It'll take a second. And now all of your ratings that you just created are in lineup HQ and it'll go into the fantasy points. So now your lineups are going to be built off of um, the ratings that you just created, which is awesome. I mean, it's so fun to do it this way um, rather than just relying on uh, somebody else's model. You can rely on your own model. And again, um, yeah, then you can go through, you can build however many lineups you want in here. So it's a lot of fun. I hope all of you are going to enjoy this new feature. Um, Again, we put a lot of work into making this a possibility. So let us know what you think. Let us know uh, what you think we can improve. If there's anything you'd like to see added or just any general feedback, any question that you have, just leave a comment at the bottom of the page. So excited about this. Good luck this week.